Recently, CH made a video on how to add a recipe into Beersmith and clowned on the style Sour Hazy Milkshake IPA. It's kind of gross, right? Like sour, bitter, IPA, milkshakey, you know? First world brewing. Don't get too crazy on me. Doesn't sound cool no more, does it? No, no, no. Is it? No, not by now. No, no, it's not fun anymore. Genus Brewing slash YouTube channel. Well, they weren't happy campers about this. So they made a video calling out Homebrew for Life to attempt to make one. The thing about that and the thing that I commented is it's, it's one of our top sellers when we have them on because we've done a decent amount of sour milkshake IPAs. And when we have them on, they sell like crazy. <laughs> Now, as much as I hate the idea of this beer, my biological step uncle once said, don't judge a book by its cover, unless the cover of the book is just really shitty. So let's see what kind of book cover this beer style is. Hit it! What's going on guys, CH from Homebrew for Life here with Maury, Mike from Culver. Today we're brewing a sour milkshake, lactose, hazy, fruited, IPA, East Coast, West Coast. All the keywords to hopefully get a viral video, which isn't gonna happen. But, we should uh, come up with a name for this beer that's just one name, like lager's a name for a beer. IPA is a name for a beer. Keywords. Like, like this beer's called should, Keywords. Yeah, it's called Braj Beer. It's called Google Keywords. <laughs> It's called douchebag. It's 90 degrees outside. If you ever wanted to do a DIY kettle sour without temperature control, I don't know where you guys are in the world or what time of the year you're watching this, but you could do a kettle sour right now just with mother nature. Yeah. This is an expensive beer. There's, you gotta buy the fruit, you gotta buy the vanilla beans, you gotta buy the lactose, you gotta buy the ingredients to make the beer, you gotta spend two days making it. No, but you're right, this is a very expensive beer. There's a lot of room for air. This is a kettle sour. We took this from the Orange is the New Brage, which is one of my favorite mm -hmm. beers that we brewed, and we're souring it. And to be honest with you, I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. Mike, how are we making this hazy today? Yeah, you said this is a spinoff of Orange is the New Brage, right. so that's kind of the same thing. We're doing nine pounds of pale two row, we're doing uh, two pounds of white wheat, and then half a pound of um, flaked oats. And then the yeast we're using is uh, London Fog to help keep the beer it's hazy. It's great low flocculating yeast. So it'll stay nice and cloudy. Nice and milky. Adding lots of uh, Whirlpool hops will help keep it cloudy too. We also got a pretty epic mail day from our boys out there in, I don't know where, I think Indianapolis or Indiana, Anvil Brewing. They sent us a awesome boil kettle and they sent us a burner that Maury's gonna put together right now. And uh, it's got a bigger burner than my Bayou, so which means it's gonna heat up strike and sparge faster or boil faster. More surface area. The burner's bigger, the burner's got more surface area, yeah. yeah. And the cool thing I like about this kettle is that it's not as wide, but taller. Yeah, so it's really good inclinations on the inside. So you can see your volume, which is really nice. And on the one we used before, sometimes like the they put the thermometer in too high. If you're only doing like three or four gallons, it doesn't yeah. even touch the water, but this is really low to it. So I like that. Yeah. So That's shout cool. out to Anvil. We're gonna put it together right now and we'll let you know if it's uh, total junk. <laughs> All right, let's go off what Mike was saying. But first, a quick water recap. Just using RO water. For West Coast IPAs, we use hard water, and for kettle sours, we use soft water. So I'm extremely confused, so we're just not gonna put anything in our water today. The grain situation. Shooting for an OG of 1060. Should give us like a 6.5 ABV. Nine pounds pale malt two row, AKA Old Faithful. Two pounds white wheat malt. Half pound flaked oats. Doesn't need to be milled. Half pound victory malt. The way we've been brewing recently is we've been combining gas and electric. Gas for strike, sparge, and boil. It's just way faster. Electric for mash, kettle souring, and anything that has to do with temp control with heat. Notice this thing in the box from Manville. It's called a kettle strainer. Looks like a cool false bottom to turn a kettle into a mash tun or just put it on your kettle to help with your flow of your recirculation. Voila. Going to connect it to the Anvil Foundry. Fits like a glove. Four gallons of strike, heated up to 150. Then we're going to dump in the Anvil. I missed that shot because I had to film and brew that day. It sucks. Set the Anvil to 150. Stir it until there's no more bad vibes. Rest mash for 15. Vorloff for another 15 to 30. Sparge until you have five gallons. Heat to a boil just for a couple minutes. Chill it to 90. We use 10 good belly pills to sour our beer. Some people use unmalted Pilsner. It's gonna take longer. There's a new kettle souring yeast out there that we have yet to try, which I would love to make a video of because it would cut the brew day in half. And if you have any questions, just tune into our live podcast every Monday night, six o'clock, starting this Monday, September 14th. That way nobody has to DM us on our Instagram 
every single time they find a new homebrewing product on Amazon and asking, should I buy it? Which is better? Do you recommend this? I have absolutely no clue. If you have any questions, tune in the podcast. There's a live chat where somebody can surely answer your question or rip on you for asking extremely dumb questions like, should I buy this $10 plastic spoon? Can I use it for brewing? When it clearly says on the label, homebrew Ohio brewing spoon. Maybe I'm looking at this the wrong way. Maybe this could be a good bit for the podcast. Having screenshots of stupid questions and having some laughs on the podcast. Hey, should I buy this Inkbird temperature control? Well, if you want a digital temperature control, then yeah. And if you don't want a digital temperature control, then then no. And I'm being a douche right now. It's like the 1% of people that watch our channel, DM the Instagram, what do I buy? Is this plastic bucket good? Is this plastic bucket good? But in all fairness, I definitely used to ask these questions. You know what? I really like the idea of this. Keep DMing us on Instagram, and I'm going to use these for Monday nights. Is this bottle capper good? Should I buy this bottle capper? Does it matter the color of the bottle caps? Is beer making kind of like wine making? My wife really likes wine, and I like beer. Monday nights, we'll tell you which bottle cap color to buy. All right, wrap it up. The Midnight Brew Sesh. hours later. All right, back to present day. We spiked our desired pH in the shortest amount of time I've ever done it. Got to 3.4 in only about eight hours. And if you want a video on how to test pH, click on this link right here. All right, back to the future. Maury with the breakfast burritos, very barrage. My girlfriend looking pissed as hell. We're gonna trap to the house. And Eric, AKA Easy E, looking sexier than ever. Let's talk about the rest of the ingredients. Two ounces of mosaic hops quarter pound of lactose. You can score this off Amazon, as did I. We're gonna go with raspberries. This stuff is expensive, but it's the real deal. Grown in the Williamette Valley in Oregon, where a lot of grapes and hops grow. We're gonna go with raspberries over sweet orange pill for this brew today. This is on Amazon as well. Today we're gonna cut some vanilla beans. All right. So when you cut your vanilla beans, what you wanna do is cut them down long ways like a hot dog bun, and then cut them into one inch pieces. What you're trying to get out of it is the inside gooey part. So you don't want to put it in like a coffee grinder because then all the gooey stuff gets stuck to the blades and to the inside of the coffee grinder. And uh, yeah, you just want to add that to the end of your boil. We just put together that new burner from Manville. Just a whole packet full of screws and nuts and bolts, but we were able to do it, the two of us, uh, without following yeah. the instructions, and it wasn't too challenging. It's firing away right now, and uh, yeah. it's doing a good job, honestly. Yeah, it was a little tough putting together, but it's 90 degrees, and we're doing it in CH's garage, and we're dripping sweat all over everything, and trying to read the directions, but honestly, just a couple pictures, a 10 millimeter wrench, and a screwdriver, maybe a crescent wrench, and they have everything you need to put it together. All right, that's it for brew day. That was, that was definitely the hardest and the hottest. That's the hardest hottest. brew we've done. That was the hottest thing we've done. Don't <laughs> call us out anymore for any more videos, Genus Brewing. We're calling you out. Do trash can turkey out in Palm Springs in August. August. Yeah. Definitely. Um, but it's over. It's fermenting right now. We did it. Woo! Time to go to the beach. What was our gravity? Again. Do we know what our gravity was? Oh, what was the gravity? It's uh, still in the fridge. It's still in the fridge.
We're never doing a kettle sour YouTube video ever again. This is our <laughs> third one. You taste the sweet and the sour? It's tangy, it's mm. tart. Mm. It's got everything in there. It's got everything Jeez. in it. You can definitely taste the mosaic hops. We got the sugar, busy. the sour, and the hops. <laughs> All right, so now let's let it ferment, and uh, we'll see you guys in a week. Cheers. One week later. What do you want? I think you know, fam. Damn it. What do you want? The one thing that's always on my mind. All right guys, welcome back. This is it, the conclusion. We've got the homies over. Uh, we couldn't get Maury. Maury is actually brewing tonight. And- Better brought him with me. In spirit, hey, he's on your shirt. And uh, Mike is teaching. Mike teaches at a local junior college. Get them some beer, but in the meantime, show's gotta go on. Donnie, what do you think of the beer? Do you taste raspberry? Do you taste I, sour? I definitely taste raspberry. Uh, it tastes like it has almost a candy type acidity to it. Yeah. It's pretty, pretty sweet from the lactose, but not, not like, it's not cloyingly sweet. It just gives it a, a lot of body. Uh, this is the most expensive beer we've done. It's a lot of raspberries. Shout out to you guys for giving us the beer and the vanilla. Giving us the <laughs> giving us the beer, giving us the raspberries and the vanilla. Yeah. You go first. It's great. Yeah, actually. So every time I try a beer, a new beer, the first question is, will I keep drinking it? And the second one is, would I drink another one? And then after about three of them, would I drink even more? And the answer would be yes, this is great. And then uh, final gravity on this was about 10, 10. So it's about six and a half percent ABV. So it's a nice crushable, Middle but- Middle ground, yeah. Yeah, it's a nice beer like that, so. I'd say it's more the sweetness that makes it less crushable than right. the alcohol. Yeah. Exactly, yeah. If I did do it over again and we weren't using it for a YouTube video. I probably wouldn't use the vanilla bean. I think that the raspberry and the pH kind of overkills. And with the vanilla, it's already kind of sweet. Right, and what's vanilla bean? 15 bucks a bean? 13, 14, 15 bucks at Sprites, Sprouts? Jerk all, but that's it. Thanks for watching this video. Cheers to eating good. My slouch. And eating good. Cheers to eating good and eating good. Drinking good. Thank you for watching this video. We're doing the broadcast tomorrow night, every Monday. We'll see you over there. Cheers to eating good. And drinking good. Doesn't it usually start with drinking good, and then go eating good? It starts with drinking good? Right, drinking good and eating good. I don't care, say good, something, I'll good. say that one. <laughs> yeah. Say something. Drinking good. Well, cheers to. <laughs> cheers to drinking good. And eating good. No, it's definitely the other way around. Cheers to eating good. And drinking good. Academy Award doesn't go to Donnie. <laughs> Convincing. Cut.